So with the recent second impeachment of Donald Trump, because the first was clearly not good enough. <laughs> clearly, we had to try a second time and fail once again. But it's interesting how with a second impeachment, some aspects of his life have come under scrutiny almost. A lot of aspects of which people hadn't really thought about before. And one of these is a sort of opulent lifestyle that he lives. So I think before we get into his opulent lifestyle, it's important to define what opulence is in the first place. So as defined by the great dictionary.com, opulence is essentially defined as grand wealth and luxury. And I think it's important to look at what we define as opulence in the first place. For example, if you've looked at Donald Trump's house, it's covered in gold pillars, gold faucets, gold everything. I mean, it really is like the picturesque idea of wealth and power. And I think this connects really well to one of my favorite novels from my English class. Um, this is called The Great Gatsby, and it's essentially surrounded around the main character, Gatsby, who pursues wealth in order to impress this girl named Daisy, who is engaged to another man, or married to another man. But essentially, he talks about how he believes that wealth is related to success, like many of those who believe in the American dream. And it's important to look at how these symbols of a grand house, the most luxurious car, all of these indicators of opulence essentially indicate that you have made it. You have had or experienced success, especially in America. But I guess it's important to question, why do we care? I mean, in the book, The Great Gatsby, the main character, Gatsby himself, appears to be disillusioned with this abundance or grandiose nature of his lifestyle. So why then is it a reality for many billionaires or wealthy people today, even though they themselves are also disillusioned with the entire lifestyle? I mean, when you think about it, it also comes back to what we think when we mean opulence. Do we really think of it as great wealth? Or is it really just the illusion of wealth and success? Because for whatever reason, we've idolized opulence to the extent that we associate it with things like success and even happiness. When in reality, there shouldn't be any correlation between the two. Here's the thing. Because we associate the American dream, which has been propagated since the Industrial Revolution because all these oil barons wanted to take advantage of their workers and be like, hey, if you work just as hard as I do, you too can become like me, in power, in control. And arguably, sure, anyone can achieve the American dream, but everyone can't. And honestly, most people don't. I mean, what would it even mean to be rich unless someone else is poor? You essentially lose value in your money if everyone else has it. It's interesting that you bring up the oil barons from the Industrial Revolution. Because even though at the time they propagated this idea of if you work hard enough, you can achieve success, you can achieve great wealth, some of them didn't even seem to believe that. Andrew Carnegie, for example, who was one of the um, most successful robber barons of the time, he had an idea that the only reason, the reason he was wealthy and others weren't was because he was intrinsically superior to them. So in his mind, he had abilities which others did not possess that made him successful. So he didn't even believe that certain people could attain the same level of success that he did. So if you live in a society that equates wealth with success, but then is also built around the idea that virtually not everybody can attain wealth how else are you supposed to live in a society that propagates this inequality in order to exude your success while being practical and it goes back to your idea of this illusion or this fantasy pursuit of opulence 
essentially, not everyone can own everything in the reality that we live in today. I mean, we see this with art. We, or billionaires, essentially create replicas to mimic one of the most great or famous pieces of artwork in order to possess it without actually possessing it. It's essentially skillful artifice that allows such a lifestyle to culminate. We see this with some of the major industries that propagate this capitalist drive to buy things in the first place. I mean, take a look at the fashion industry. With the fashion industry especially, like, while the fine arts industry may only be catered towards billionaires and millionaires, fashion applies to everyone. So anyone can get some level of high-level fashion. A lot of people can buy stuff from luxury brands like Gucci or Louis Vuitton, but nobody can have everything from those brands. So instead, people rely on fast fashion. Companies like Forever 21 and H&M who are able to sell products at a cheap price that mimic things from high fashion brands. So they can somehow achieve this level of opulence, an illusion of wealth, despite perhaps not having it to begin with. I think it's also important to bring up the fact that a lot of people who do pursue opulence without necessarily having that abundance to begin with, they're often perceived as vain, but the middle class or lower class pursuing opulence have a powerful statement within themselves. Have you heard of Harlem ballroom culture? I've heard of it, but I don't know much about it. Okay, so for those of you that don't know, Harlem um, in the 1880s when this sort of began to like the 1920s where this was super popular, it's essentially a place uh, in the north where a lot of African Americans uh, were concentrated in because that provided the most amount of success for people at the time considering that slavery had recently ended and because racism wasn't going to fix itself and still hasn't today. Uh, that area was essentially the best f for their outlooks. But essentially, Harlem ballroom culture was kind of the or origins of a lot of drag culture today, where a lot of queer POC essentially dressed up in these fancy ball gowns, regardless of their gender, and just paraded around town, even though cross-dressing was illegal at the time they were able to host these balls and just live this opulent lifestyle and exude this fantasy of wealth and glamour through their skillful artifice in order to make a statement about a lifestyle that they were unjustly denied. They're essentially saying, if I was just as privileged as a rich, straight, white man, I too would be able to be in the same position because I can look the part. It's interesting though, because at the time, they used opulence as a way of empowerment. But now it seems to be the opposite. When trying to achieve or attain some sort of opulence, we're really just playing into the hands of capitalism. When we buy things in order to make ourselves look more wealthy or more powerful, we're just buying into this idea that by looking the part, by paying corporations to help us seem opulent, we'll somehow become more wealthy to begin with. But we're really just paying giant corporations who are owned by people who will never be as rich as. I guess it also stems from the idea that this wistful thinking, this fantasy of pursuing the American dream is a lot more enticing to one's imagination and say the mathematical theories behind fixing economic inequality. Yeah, I mean, the entire idea of the American dream almost acts as a buffer so that people aren't forced to confront their own privilege or sometimes lack thereof. While for the wealthy and powerful in society, this can essentially serve as a big flex to the grandiose nature of their lifestyle. For the marginalized and impoverished, it is essentially a statement or a protest in and, in and of itself that essentially defies the injustice that they've 
incurred throughout the time that they've lived that still somehow plays into this need of capitalism and continues to propagate this gap or disparity between classes. I mean, look at any sort of marketing. Every company, when they're selling you a product, they're not just selling you that product. They're selling you a lifestyle so that you sub subconsciously associate wealth and the ability to purchase items or products as a way to attain success or happiness. Because that's what these companies are promising you. And yet this opulence that is propagated by these industries is not a celebration of the real lifestyle of luxury and decadence. Because essentially illusions are ephemeral or temporary. So what happens when all of this illusionment goes away? 